Welcome to this post-game media edition of Talking Hoosier Baseball. Today is Saturday, March 23rd, 2024. The Indiana Hoosiers fell into a familiar pattern on Friday. Despite pitching five scoreless frames to start the game and two to end the game, one disastrous eight-run inning spelled doom as they open up play 0-1 and one in the Big Ten. The media met with head coach Jeff Mercer following the contest. The one inning kind of got away from you guys there tonight. When it comes to the way some of those innings have unfolded this year, what, what kind of happens in those, if, if you can pinpoint it? Well, I think the hard part with those innings, oftentimes it's almost all with two outs. So you got, they score a couple there, right? You get a lead off single, and you double. And we had Julian going, and the tie's kind of been our guys with Julian going. First pitch, double, and now I got to get him hot. And so it kind of happens quickly there. Uh, they bunted, which kind of gave us the, the, the idea like we don't need to have somebody else up because you've got okay, you second and third, and then you've got one out. You get the ground ball. Okay, five, it's a, you know, I think it was a ground ball to Oliver, or two straight ground ball to Oliver. So you got you know a guy on third base and two outs. And so you don't you don't assume there, okay, you have to get somebody else up. Uh, it was just they laid off. They didn't. They they finished at bats and, and we didn't. Um, they didn't execute some two strike situations and yeah, two or three walks and then you hit a, you hit a guy and the inning kind of opens up on him. You. you know that's what I talked to Coach Clant there after the game and I kind of asked the same thing. So I feel like sometimes that we need to do a better job as coaches of managing those situations. Um, and they often they often come down and get two outs and the guy on third base and. If, you know, we sent Kraft down, but <clears throat> it's just like two outs, two outs, two outs, and they continue to extend the inning. So that it stinks because we actually we actually played played good defense and, uh, and and pitched it well outside of that one inning. So the things that we've really focused on, um, we were better at outside of that one inning. And it's, it is it's frustrating, you know. But you look back at it, and you you know you look back at like 2020 you know vision, and you're like, okay. In the in the in the moment, you don't feel like like you're out of it. You don't feel like that this is gonna this is probably gonna be a three or four run inning, and you get back in here and it ends up being an eight run inning. It gets away from you. So, um, also, it's a great question. It's a great question. Then you go on a Friday night, and you're trying to not you're trying to not use your stuff for the rest of the weekend. You know they they didn't just start to throw the ball, and so have we. But both teams on Sunday are TBD, and so you're trying to not go to Kraft or somebody Kraft had success against them last year. So you're trying to make sure you can cover the rest of the weekend. And offensively, we didn't do a good enough job. So we weren't in a position necessarily to, okay, so you'll lose five to one instead of losing eight or nine to one. It doesn't necessarily change the outcome of the game. But if you if you're too quick, if you have too quick of a trigger on the mound, then you've you've potentially spoiled tomorrow or you've oh, spoiled Sunday. And so you don't want to be too quick triggered, but you also don't want to be late. And you just kind of it's a long answer to your question. But th- there's a lot going through it. And you're you're trying to kind of thread the needle perfectly um, based on what your offense is doing, based on where they're at in their pin in the night and, and all that kind of stuff. So it's, uh, it's just a nuanced, it's a lot of pieces to it. Like it's, you just said, kind of lacking at the plate tonight. I guess simply what wasn't working or what were Crowder and Hall doing to shut the hairs down? Well, I, the, 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 the lefty, he did a fine job. He, he was competitive. I, I didn't think we were very competitive offensively late. and We were frustrated and it showed in our bats. Crowder kid was just he was just really good. He was 95, 96 with right throughout the, almost the entirety of his outing. We had a shot early, hits two guys. If you're gonna get to a good starter who's on his on the day, right? He's having a day. He's feeling good. He's pumped up. It's conference play, um, and and they're gonna ride him. You want to try to get to him early. We have two hit by pitches, and if you come through there, you know you, you score one or two in the first, and you kind of kind of hit him in the mouth. You got a chance there with those guys. Once he gets in his groove and once he gets in his stride, it's gonna be it's gonna be a tough battle. Uh, we had bases loaded and one out with the top of the order, and we only scored one run, and, and that's hard. If you're going to get them, you know, you, you break through in the first there when he gives you an opening, and then you get you battle and you get bases loaded and one out. It's a 0 0 game at the time, um, and you, you, you throw a ball in the gap and you score two or three, and away you go. And that's how those games are won against good arms. So we he did a good job. I, that's why I told you know, one of the front of our hitting guys, we were kind of talking about it, and you're frustrated. He said, it's also a Friday game. It's a Friday game, and the guy's good, and he's talented, and he's and he's feeling it, and, and he's la- he's landing his stuff. And, um, but when you have opportunities, you have to capitalize, and we, we just didn't. We weren't able to, to break it open early, and, and then again, you go back to your question: 
when you don't break it open, now you're you're kind of trying to thread the needle on what you do on the mound to give yourself a chance to win the series. Um, you, you're not gonna um, you're not gonna win the series tonight, but you can lose the series tonight if you're if you're too quick triggered. So the offense didn't necessarily give us an avenue to use the mound the way. Would, although Julian's been good, like Julian's got a two and a half, and, and, and Julian's been our guy in those situations. He's got a couple ground balls, just didn't get him out with him. Is it at all frustrating? Speaking of Julian, not him, but I'm. It, you have high leverage guys, but the last couple of weeks they've all not always come through in that. And you know, in these high leverage spots, is that frustrating to not really yeah. know who you can go to and for sure in high leverage spots and know you're going to be okay? You get the nail on the head. Yeah. No, you're right. It's, it is like it, it is. Um, you're you're trying to play the hot hand. You're trying to get the guys in there that have thrown well and and, and done their job. And, and to get a, a, a varied outing is hard, right? From week to week, when you don't necessarily know outing to outing, you don't necessarily know what you're going to get. Uh, although Julian's stuff was good. You know, it was 91, 93. The breaking ball was good. The curveball is good. Slider's good. You know, they, they didn't chase. They didn't expand. And we didn't finish at bats. And so when you do that, you just open yourself up. Um, you know, I just kind of told the guys that you just – you. It eventually goes the other way. Like if you just keep showing up and just keep fighting and just keep persevering your way through it, it eventually goes the other way. Um, it's kind of like when a hitter lines out three or four times and he gets frustrated. Um, you know, you always kind of, I always kind of joke with him. You're building up good karma. You're gonna get a couple, you know, swing and bunt and a bloop in the right, and um, that's kind of it's kind of where it feels like we're at a little bit. You just keep fighting your way through it, and build up a good a bunch of positive karma, and when it goes the other way, it goes the other way for you. But um, but yeah, no, it, it's hard. It's hard to, to kind of, like I said, not to overuse the cliche term and thread the needle, but it's hard a little bit when um, you, you just get a, a variety of outcomes when, you, when you're trying to find some consistency and some stability and put guys in the right spot to be successful, um, and then you get a different outcome. But if one, of the, you know, one or two of those balls that goes in the six hole is, you know, three or four feet either way, uh, you know, it's a different inning. You know, the, the, the swing and bunt, the pine, it, you know, it's a – just an incredibly difficult play if that ball sit a little bit harder and you get out of the inning and you know it's three or four to one instead of being eight it's you know a different game but yeah it's uh, that's why they that's why I call it coaching not winning you got to coach them so you got to keep showing up go kind of going back to how you and your staff manages it is there maybe a balance that you try to strike when when things go this way where you maybe consider alternating your approach yeah. versus Maybe trusting in what you've been doing. Yeah, I mean, the, the the alternative is to have two guys up. That would be the alternative. That's what we talked about. Is in those situations when those innings may get going, is is uh, you, you feel good about it. Again, you have two outs and one guy on. It's like okay, we don't need to have somebody else up hot. And then you, if you're going to go somebody in that situation, it's one of your guys. <clears throat> you get a ground ball to the third baseman out of the inning, and you just got one of your guys hot. Now you got to sit him back down, and and it just there's only so many bullets they have. So when you get a guy up, it's it's fine. He may not throw in that game, but you get a diminishing return on the back end. So now he's down two miles an hour tomorrow or on Sunday, and his stuff sounds good. And he, and then it's like, well, why wasn't – not you, I'm saying in general. Then we're all sitting here going, well, why wasn't so-and-so as good? Well, it's because he threw, you know, 40 heaters down in the bullpen, and, you know, he, he, he spent his best stuff down there throwing to the mannequin. So he, he, he wasn't, it wasn't out there in the game. So that that's always – we just talked about maybe we just need to have we, we think we go to the right move and just have the next guy playing catch and if for whatever reason happenstance bad luck ground balls in a six hole but whatever it is like you just go to the next guy before and and, uh, and, and roll the dice that way but you know at the same time you know, we do that with ethan phillips start the game and you know we talked about okay don't don't be late with ty like, that was kind of the sentiment like ty let's not be late and then, you know, Ethan gets a ground ball double play and we get out of it. And it's like, well, I would have stunk if I would have brought Ty in right there. We got out of it, you know, and we managed the big inning and didn't have a big inning. Um, and if you, if that ball slides through, all of a sudden you're kicking yourself. So yeah, it's, a, it's a lot of, uh, of what ifs. But probably we'll just have to have two guys up and just go to the next guy if it starts to go a little bit and, and do everything we can to um, disallow those big innings because they have. They, they've, been the, they've been the killer. They've been the killer. You take that inning off the board. If one of those balls goes differently, it's you know two to one, three to one, and different game. Coach, uh, sixteen hours until the next game tomorrow. To turn around. How do you get your team to mentally recover from a night like tonight? That that eight inning. 
Yeah. I just told him last year, you know, we lost Friday to Illinois in third place and played really poorly on, on the first game Saturday. And uh, Sonar didn't wasn't good that day. Kraft had, had a career outing. And I yelled at everybody after the second game. We came out and won the third game. You know, we, we lost at Penn State. Uh, we got pushed back. We lost to Penn State on Saturday and had to play a doubleheader on Sunday and came out and won a doubleheader. I think the year that we won the Big Ten, we lost uh, three to five Fridays and came out and won the series. So you tell them before the game, everybody's 0-0 and everybody's ready to go. So it's going to be a fight. It's going to be a dog fight. It's going to be tough. And, you know, we, we've done it before. We did it last weekend. We lost the first game and came back and won the next two. So you just got to keep showing up. And nobody's going to go undefeated in the league. And so I, I guess the good news is we got that out of the way, so we don't have to carry that burden. We don't have to play with pressure with an undefeated league record. Um, but you know, you just show up and keep playing. You just show up and keep playing and you fight and compete. And you know, I would have liked to have seen us get get deeper into their bullpen. Um, you know, they score eight runs, and then we kind of, you know, we weren't as good as we should have been offensively late to make them go to the bullpen. And we talked about that, but. Um, Sometimes it's tough. It's, it's a game. So sometimes it's tough that it didn't go your way. I, I know this. Like If you don't keep fighting, you don't persevere, it doesn't change. So there, there's no other option. You just got to keep showing up and keep going. So that's if – you if you were a fly on the wall, that would have been what you would have heard as well. I wanted to ask about Jason Oliver turning that nice double play tonight. I guess what are the things you see from him in practice behind the scenes yeah. that kind of allow him to make those plays as a freshman? Too? Yeah, he is, he is a special talent. He's going to be a great player. Uh, he's just so athletic. He has a great arm. He always loaded him in 90s off the mound. And so, actually, he and I had worked on throwing the ball back across his body. He was a primary shortstop, primary left side infielder in high school. And so when they when those young guys, typically like Tyler did last year, from short to second, the hard play for them is the is the ball up the middle thrown back across their body. They never have to make that play. Um, so we actually worked on that quite a bit this week. We got back in a chance to practice. Um, so he's super athletic, has a great arm. He, he's able to throw back across his body really well. Um, he, a, a ton of force coming across in double play <coughs> because of the engine. Um, and so he's very sure-handed, presents the glove really well. Uh, sound, this is going to sound silly, but some guys have have a, a really mobile wrist. They're able to expose their webbing to the to the ball. So when it hits, it hits really flush. You can you can hear a good infielder. And uh, he's able to do that. Some guys have are a little stiffer in the balls into the pocket more. Those are the balls that roll up their their hand. But he's really he has really good hands. His ball sticks. Has a great arm. And he and he's been rather fearless. You know, I I, I don't know. Uh, sometimes it's better to be uh, naive and, and just go play. And he's done a great job of doing that. He shows up and competes. Had some good at bats tonight too. Uh, big base hit in the inning that we scored a run there. Had a chance to put up more walk. So. He's, he's done a really nice job. He's done a really nice job. You had three pitchers there at the end that uh, you gave some opportunities to and yeah. uh, turned in some pretty good performances. Yeah. What can you say? And it's specifically about SETI and what he was able to accomplish today. Yeah, SETI, you know, SETI's done a good job. He's, he's gone in and faced some really tough offenses. Does, and that, and that's, a, that's a tough deal. He's had a tough go with things. It's not necessarily his fault. But when you look at his, his evolution, the slider's been much better. Uh, the splitter, he was able to really get uh, across the plate and down. Sometimes it's, sometimes he kind of pulls it, and so it's out. It's never in the tunnel. Um, and so, but so when the splitter was across the plate and down, the slider was sharp, and then the fastball can can play up. You know, what's hard for him sometimes is it's not 95, so he needs he needs the other two pitches to play off on the plate for the fastball to jump. And he did it tonight, um, and 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 that's also an avenue too. You know, once we. Um, once they scored that big inning, you know, maybe it's a, more of a by committee and, and less of by individual effort. Um, so, no, that, he was really good. Said he's been excellent. He's he's really reinvented himself. He's changed his delivery and um, added the off-speed, the, the, the better slider to go with the splitter. Um, and then, you know, Shaw, Shaw did a good job. I had a, had a chance to get out of that inning. Um, and then Vogel was, was good as well. So um, just getting those guys as much experience as possible to be able to help us out and, and kind of give us more options when those settings get going like that. Okay, Coach, you got Foley going tomorrow. Mm -hmm. uh, you saw the Illinois bats tonight. Is the approach different on the mound? What do you want to see from Connor tomorrow? Complete game? What do you, you, got, <laughs> you can do that for us? <laughs> uh, the wind's going to blow in 25 miles an hour, and he's going to throw the ball really hard. So. Um, it, hopefully it's a good day for us on the mound. No, I'm, I'm just kidding. <laughs> we got you. Got to be able to laugh, right? Um, 
No, he just he needs to be able to, to, to mix pitches. That's his big thing. He's he he becomes you know fastball dominant and reliant, and then sometimes can become too off speed reliant. And so just having a balance and a blend and a mix in between those. And so you talk to him. I talked to him really before the season. It's your first time doing this, and so you're watching his evolution in real time. Great stuff. Incredible athlete. Great kid. Competitor. Um, and just kind of finding where his confidence is at in 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 those different pitches. And so uh, I would say you're you're going to see a, a, a variety of pitches, a mix. He's going to have to mix unless there's something that bears itself out where he's um, he's going to have to be able to lean on it more. So right, so last week against Belmont, um, they did a great job turning around 98 miles an hour. They did a great job doing that. So he went to to almost exclusively off speed, probably too much. And then found a blend. Um, you know, when he when he, when he beat uh, uh, Coastal and Dallas Baptist, he was almost primarily fastball. So, the game once you kind of get into the game and you kind of get a chance to feel it a little bit, uh, you you can feel those things out. Um, I would imagine the fastball plays well from from watching some of the stuff that I, I watched today. I would imagine the fastball plays well, um, but he's going to have to land some some two one off speed pitches, some. Uh, some 0-1 off speed, some some 1-0 off speed, and keep guys in between to allow the fastball to play up. So, um, no, hopefully uh, he's he's gotten better and better. So hopefully tomorrow we can he'll give us a good start. I know he'll give us a good start, um, and then we're gonna have to manage how far how, how far we can get him and go from there. All right, thanks. Game two of the Illinois series starts 2 p.m. today. See you at the Bart.